Good. Okay, welcome to Confident Lady Boss. Tonight we're talking with Diane Munson, who is going to be talking about be in control of your money. So who wants to be in control of your money? I know I do, instead of money controlling us. Yes. So um, before Diane, uh, Diane is, is a success coach, and I'll have her introduce herself. Um, but Janet, why don't you tell us about yourself for Diane? Yeah, please. Hi, Diane. Um, Hi. Let's see. I like how, yeah, I'm a essential oil distributor, a passionate uh, essential oil user. Married, live in Connecticut here. Um, I have a daughter and a stepson, two cats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Good. Still drinking, or, Still working my day job in finance and uh, living the dream to be a essential oil entrepreneur. Full time. Yes. So she wants to be a full time what, what entrepreneur. Kind of, what kind of finance are you working in now? Uh, I'm a finance associate up for a graphic arts. No, I'm sorry. Graphic design company. Like they do package design. Okay. Um, like they, they developed or they made the upside down ketchup bottle. Really? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah, graphic design. And then you do the financial aspect of it? I do the bookkeeping. I do the bookkeeping, um, but yeah, I, billing um, and stuff. I, I do the billing, yeah, for the company, for our clients. Cool. Yeah. You've been doing it a long time? Yeah. Since got out of high school. <laughs> long time, right? Uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> a, you know what? That's, that's a blessing today. It's very hard to keep jobs. These companies are closing laying people off right oh yeah, right. Very yeah. Well, i've been with this company for seven years so yeah that's great good yeah. good awesome all right and Zabora, what about you hello um, Hi. i am a multi skilled person but still not working my passion yeah, me too. I right now I'm doing a temp job with at doing admin work and I hate it. <laughs> yeah. And me too. That's fair. That's fair. But <laughs> it you know, it pays the bills. I also am a licensed agent. I sell life, health and disability insurance. With and that's it. challenging. My passion is really to talk to people, counsel, advise them, anything from the, you know, what kind of career they should do. And, um, you know, just be engaged in employee relations. But you know what I found out, ladies? Ageism is real out there in the world right now. Oh, it is. Definitely. I mean? Very. It is, it is really bad. And um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I should champion that course somehow. But, you know, I like these webinars. They're very informative. They're very – and they're fun. Yes, and you yeah. learn so much about yourself and how to go out there and conquer these – uh, issues that you're dealing with all the time mm -hmm. and it is it's it's crazy because there's there's so much the ladies the women we have so much on our shoulders yeah you know, the, the men they get out of bed they go to work and that's it they're done you know we you got to take care of the kids you got to get dinner ready you got the grocery show, you get laundry you got to do it all and then take care of yourself and your employment as well so it's, you know, the women have a lot more responsibility than the men do a lot of times. I don't have any children personally, um, but it is. It's, it's a much bigger job for a woman. Oh, and I have a 21-year-old daughter in college also. I'm divorced. So um, it's complicated, you know. It really is. Yeah. Through it all, you have to just hang in there. That's it. Stay the positive. Best you can. Keep, Stay positive keep your, the best keep your you can. vision. Yeah. Keep your focus. And yes. it'll, it'll come. Some somehow, some way, it will come if you oh, really. Oh yeah, no, you're absolutely yeah. right. That's why absolutely. I like these um these you know webinars. These they're very informative and they're very uplifting. Yeah, for they sure. are. And and what I love about it is you just don't know who's going to show up every Tuesday. Uh, I mean every Thursday. It's yeah. always different people. Sometimes it's the same. Sometimes it's new. So we'll see who shows up late tonight. Which there's always somebody that shows up late. <laughs> <laughs> that goes without saying right or does it and then they watch the replay that's why i do the replay because 
people that can't show up there, like I've started to have people on Meetup now asking me for replays and I'm saying, why didn't you attend the live one? And it's like, okay, but they want the replay. So. Yeah, and they can always ask questions there. Exactly. exactly. If there's any to ask. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So, so the replay works. So, Ooh. all right. So Diane. Okay. Yes. I didn't go anywhere. I just dropped my pen. Okay. I'm so. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Diane, why don't you take it away? <laughs> sure. So, um, hi, ladies. Um, I'm very happy to be speaking with you tonight. Um, like Tina said, my name is Diane Munson. Um, I've been working as a financial coach, business coach, um, a mentor, um, business owner for the last eight years. Um, I came from a corporate America background my entire career. 30 plus years, um, pretty much working. I only had three jobs in my life. Each one of them were 10 plus years. And the last job that I had, I did a ton of traveling. I was an operations setup specialist. So they would, they were secure government contracts. And I was the person that did the traveling and went to wherever they needed me. The last um, assignment they gave me was down in Austin, Texas. Asked me to go down there for six weeks, which was very, very normal for me. Um, I was gone a lot, but six weeks was good. And um, I ended up being there for three years, literally living out of a hotel room for three years. They allowed me to come home once a month to see my husband, or they even fly him down there not to lose me on the Friday, Monday travel. Oh, God. Shortly thereafter, my dad got sick, um, had problems with his heart, he needed a triple bypass. So, of course, I got on a plane and I came home for that. The day after his surgery, where we literally almost lost him, I got a phone call from the vice president of the company who brought me into this arena that I was working on. And he said, Diana, I am so sorry, but we got to let you go. And I said, excuse me? <laughs> you know, it like kind of blew me away because I thought I was safe. I thought I was secure. I thought I was retiring with this company. Next thing I know, I don't have a job. We need boots on the ground. So, you know, if you can't be there, I said, I didn't ask for a vacation. My father needed a bypass. What are you crazy? So, but that's how corporate America, work, America works, unfortunately, right? They, they care about their bottom line more than their dedication and loyal employees. So I knew I wanted to do, start my own business. I didn't know what it was going to be. Um, I was actually out of work for two years, but I was making great money. So um, I didn't see my husband for three years, so we were able to put away quite a bit of money, which was good because financially we were okay. Mm -hmm. um, two years after that, this opportunity kind of fell into my lap, and I took a look at it, and the first thing that appealed most to me was the education, right? So um, that, that's what turns me on the most. I love helping other people reach their goals and dreams. That's, you know, it's been my way of management through my entire career. But with this, I get to choose who I work with, when I work, what hours, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and if I want to take a day off, there's nobody there to fire me. It's my business. So I started um, just to get some education and kind of clean up my finances. They weren't horrible at all. Um, but, you know, we had a mortgage. Um, we had some credit card debt, nothing, nothing exuberant. Um, and you know, we, we had things going on. So, you know, I said, I got to learn how this stuff works because what I found was a lot of the things I was doing, I was doing wrong. We had everything in place, but a lot of the wrong products in place. And it was just a simple matter of nobody ever taught us. Right. So I got, I got really into the educational aspect of this business and learned everything I could possibly learn, fell in love with the business. And now eight years later, here we are. Um, this is my stake is in the ground. This is my passion. This is my heart. Um, and this is where I'll go to the grave. You know, um, nobody's going to lay me off here and I'm going to help as many people reach their goals and dreams in the process. So anybody that's looking for their goals and dreams to be met, I can, I can offer a plan. We can just through basic concept teaching, um, we can get people out of debt. Nine times out of ten, I can I can get people just very simply out of debt, and it doesn't matter what the amount of debt is, but within ten years, by by utilizing just very very simple concepts. So let's think about it for a minute. If you if you ladies, you know, 
and think about the people around us, right? And some of the questions that, that I ask my clients, right? Are you on track for retirement? Most people don't even know what that means, right? If, if you ask about retirement, everybody knows what age they want to retire, but how much money do you need to have to get that retirement completed and live comfortably? Nobody knows that number. That's something I can provide to you and then break it down and say, okay, on a monthly basis, this is your goal. This is what you need to start putting away to hit that goal. Now, whether you get there or not, that's on you, but I can arm you with the information because we don't know what we don't know. And if people are educated and they're not making informed decisions, they're making bad decisions. Can we agree with that? Yes, mm -hmm. educated and informed decisions, key. We need those, it's yeah. very important. And, and I know this because I was, I was sold life insurance by a friend who in plain terms screwed me, right? And, and that was somebody that I trusted, I, I had a friendship with and um, sold me life insurance that was not gonna do me any good. But I didn't understand it at the time. You know, they make it sound really good. But then I understood that it was not right and it was not going to serve me. So, you know, the more education I got, the more passionate I got about helping others. My family, my friends, I was talking to everybody and anybody I could find. Um, you know, and, and then, yeah, are you getting the highest rate of return on your investment in savings? Most people are out there thinking about, you know, uh, if they see a 2% or a 3% CD, in today, we're excited about that. Not knowing yeah. that you can get a 10 or 12% rate, rate of return out there, That's right? Sad. So it's just a matter of the education. Um, if, you know, if you're closer to, to the retirement age, if you're 50 or older, we know what 2008 caused a, a very big mess and the people that were at retirement at that point lost their shirts uh -huh. if their money wasn't protected, right? So they had to go back to work. Um, do we, do you guys have something that will protect you when the next downfall happens? Cause that's, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when, mm -hmm. and it's, but it's actually well overdue right now. So, um, is your family, you know, properly protected income protected, right? And that's what life insurance should be. Just simply protection of the income should the other spouse pass away, right? We want to make sure that if seven thousand dollars is going out every month in bills and utilities, mortgages, cars, everything else, and you're both making thirty five hundred a month, and one of you passes away, what does that nightmare look like? I, I mean, emotionally, you're you're destroyed as it is, but now financially, we got to think about what are we going to do because we're thirty five hundred dollars a month short. So it's an income replacement tool, and we call it life saving insurance not life insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're literally saving the lives of our spouses, partners, whoever it is that's dependent on our income. Um, debt, like I said, I mean, who do we know today that's not in debt? Everybody's in debt today, right? So we can, we can help you with that. Um, you know, funding children's education, we can help with that. You know, it's it basically, we got to learn how to be in control of our own money. Is, is the important thing. Because when we're not in control of our money, our money is in control of us. You know, how many people do we know when we get to the end of the month, they don't have a dime in their pocket and they can't, they're like really scrambling for the next paycheck. And, and we don't want people to live like that, right? So we can, just by, just by sitting and getting some education, you can get yourself back on track um, just by implementing a few simple con concepts. Um, you got to have yourself accountable, right? You got to make yourself a debt on a monthly basis. And people say to me all the time, Diane, I don't have any money to save. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm barely getting by now, but we, we can find money that's in your current budget and, and show you a way to make that money work for you. Um, where you can actually do within the same budget and, and make some small changes that'll help you um, free up money. We do things as simple as auto and home. So you can, you can make a phone call and save whatever. I just called for my father yesterday. We saved him $900 a year on his homeowner's insurance. He's very excited right now. Yeah. You know, so those are all great things to do. But when it comes to women specifically, 
I wrote down some numbers because we, I do a lot of seminars on this. Women make up 40% of the U.S. workforce right now. 40, I'm sorry, 47%. 44% are the primary breadwinners in the, in the, in the family, mm -hmm. right? Those numbers are increasing and increasing, getting bigger and bigger every single year because what used to be the husband goes to work and the wife stays home and takes the kids. That's not how this works anymore, right? We got to have both spouses nine times out of 10 have to be working so we can afford to, to live where we're living and, and have the lifestyle that we're having. So without those two incomes coming in, we're, we're really in, in trouble. Um, but women are making more and more coming up on the line. But when you think about it, women are paid 72 cents on the, on the dollar versus men make the dollar, which is totally ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, equal pay for equal work. You know, and that's how it should be, but that's unfortunately not what's going on out there. Hmm. They think. Go ahead. So it's still happening that women are making less. Oh yeah, seventy-two cents on the dollar. That's what I which thought. Is, which is quite ridiculous. Um, we think about um, people with a mindset and, and a modest income. You can take thirty-two years to accumulate an average of three million dollars saving 20% of your income. So you get in front of somebody that's 25 or 30 years old and, and they get it, they understand it, and they can start putting away something as small as 50 bucks a month and then increase as their jobs increase as they move forward, they can easily have the retirement of a lifetime. But they don't know that right. because they don't know what they don't know. right? right? And, the, and the, market is, the market's doing phenomenally like year to date right now is, is ridiculous. Um, the funds I got my clients in, they're, they're off the hook right now. My funds are doing 21%. Well, a, a client's doing 25% right. year to date, but it's, it's well, just a matter of knowing. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought Deborah, Deborah, did you say something? Yeah, I'm sorry. My daughter, let me mute. Let me mute. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. that's okay. I thought you said yeah, something. So it's just, yeah, so it's just like a matter of information. You know, people say, well, yeah, we're, we're going to retire at 65. Okay, well, what's your FIN number? Well, what's a FIN number? That's your financial independence number. How much money do you need to have at retirement in order to retire at 65 and, and have a comfortable retirement with dignity, right? So those are all things that, that people need. Folks are struggling out there. My focus is on middle income folks. I'm not looking for, don't get me wrong, it's not that I won't sit down and help a wealthy person, but my market is 85% of the population that's middle income America. And those are the folks that need it the most. They need this education and they're struggling. So by, you know, just by sitting with me and getting some education, we can put a plan together for them. It doesn't cost them a dime to sit with me. It doesn't cost a dime for the plan. And we can help them in, in way, many ways, depending on you know, where they are. Obviously, everybody is different. But I'm gonna give you now just four tips that, um, that'll help you in saving, right? So you have to balance your wants versus your needs. Needs are, are things that we, we must have, right? We have to have those. The wants are things, yeah, it would be nice to have, but it's not a necessity, right? And that's really important. If you can just focus yourself for a five or 10 year period, regardless of your age right now, you can, you can get some real good investments going and have some serious money saved, but you've got to get focused on that. You can't, you can't be going out and, you know, we're women, we like to shop, right? So the, the pocketbooks and the clothes and, you know, all that stuff, we can't spend money like that. Right. For every time we go to put something out, we got to make ourselves that debt right at the beginning of the month. So when that paycheck comes in, you're the first thing that gets paid, right? And you take whatever it is, $50, $100, whatever you can afford to put and put that away, right? And that's important. Um, so they, it, people are, are out there, they're making decisions that put them closer to their goals 
but you got to start saving as soon as possible. That kind of goes without saying. And that's why I love getting in front of the young people because when the young people get it, I got about 12 clients right now that are 25 to 27 years old and they're maxing out $600 a month, their Roth IRAs. These people are going to be wealthy when they get to retirement because they yeah. get it. Yeah. Because somebody talked to them and, and explained it to them. Um, you got to limit your exposure to the temptation. That's, that's like what we we're just talking about wants versus needs. Right. If we're not, we're not limiting our exposure, you got to be careful about who you hang out with, where you go, what you do, you know, put yourself on a, on a tighter budget because you're going to, you might sacrifice a little bit now, but at least, you know, when you get to retirement, you'll be in a really good place. And people say, well, what about my kids? I want to save for their education. Well, that's great, but there's scholarships out there. There's student loans, obviously, as we know, $12 trillion in student loan debt right now. I know. Um, which is insane. I know. Right? I, I don't know if that's ever going to be paid off. I, I don't think it ever will be. I know. I know they're, you know, they really, they're talking about um, changing laws to make education free. And that I know I can't ever see happening because there'll be World War Four in here. You know, if, if who's going to pay are, that? I mean, we're going to end up paying that anyway. The taxpayers, exactly right. Of course, taxpayers going to pay for it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Oh, I'm sorry, I just kicked my dog. Yeah. Um, so, anybody have any questions yet? So, so let's review it. So, the four tips you went through that. No, you didn't go through all of them. You just went with the first one. Well, I did three. So we did. Balance. You have to balance your wants versus your needs. Yep. Okay. I got that. You have, to make, you have to make decisions that put you closer to your goals. Oh, okay. Make decisions closer to your goals. Okay. Limit your exposure to temptation. Yep. I got that. Okay. And then the fourth one is you have to practice patience. Hmm. Practice Because, patience. It, you know, it seems obvious that we say that, right? But most most folks only focus on two things when it comes to money. Mm. How fast can I make it and how fast can I spend it? <laughs> that's, that's the American way, right? We, we get our money. We want to go. We yeah. want to spend. Yeah. And we got we to gotta just really be patient <clears throat> and put, put your goals down. Write them down. Mm -hmm. Because what are we, I don't know how you guys um, do your stuff, but I always tell my clients, if it's not written down, it's never going to happen. Just like right. goals or affirm right. affirmations, you write it, you read it, you say it six times a day. It only take you a few minutes to do that. Maybe when you get out of bed in the morning before you go to bed at night. But if you're keeping your goals in front of you at all times, they will happen if yeah. you're focusing on them. So that's kind of that's kind of what I was what I was gonna um, you know talk on. Um, there's, you know, how do people feel about money out there? How do you ladies feel about money? Yeah. Tell us, tell us your feelings about money. When you, money is fill in the blank. <clears throat> a struggle right now. Right. So money is a struggle. Okay. I get that from tons of people and, and you're totally normal. That's, that's a normal response. It is. It, it is, is a normal. struggle. Yeah. So both of you think money is a struggle. Absolutely. Okay. And it doesn't have to be, right? Like, like I said, if, if you get some education and you can make some very minor changes without, you know, having to put out hundreds of, hundreds of dollars extra a month, is that something that would help you out? You know, so we're just, we're just trying to figure out, um, who needs help? And if you do, I'm here. That's fine. If, if you want to go somewhere else, that's fine. But the important thing is you got to start thinking about this stuff. No, you know, no, yeah, you're please. correct. It's a struggle in the sense that I am a financial advisor, so I know what you're talking about, but Absolutely. you know, I can always listen and learn more. When sure. I say it's a struggle, it's a struggle because a lot of times you don't have enough to do what you know you're supposed to do with it. You right. see what I mean? Yes, ma'am. Not enough. I sure do. Yeah. To, to do to do what you know you're supposed to do with mm -hmm. it. Exactly. Yep. Because because the the wants 
kind of get in the way. Oh, there's a new shiny object over there. I want that. Yeah. You know, I'll save next week or next month, you know, and that's unfortunately the mentality that's out there today. And that kind of right. stinks. But can I right. share, can I share something? So Please. I left my corporate job last year and Deborah, you could relate to this. Yeah. Uh, we were both working at the same company. I was making real good money. I had bonuses, I had profit sharing, and I was doing well. Now my income went real down because mm -hmm. I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. It's amazing how creative I've gotten with money. Exactly right. My wants and my needs, totally different. I don't need clothes anymore. I don't need to do the things that I was doing. The Dunkin' Donuts coffee that I was drinking, I've saved money just on Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, of course, yeah, for sure. Now, I could have done that even, so when I was working, I could have put more money away instead of buying that, that coffee, that right. right? Okay, because the money was coming, the money was coming. So, right. but here's the thing that I've learned. This is like, it's amazing to me because I'm an impatient person. <laughs> by nature yep. okay and I've cut out things but it's okay because when I see the trade-off that I've gotten is that I am happier now than I was before the and money the doesn't will come the, the money, money will, will come. come the money will come it's not gonna bring me happiness the money didn't the money that I had before didn't bring me happiness but I right. had more money yeah I did too I was well into six figures same thing and when you start a business, you're, you're not making that $100,000 no. right off the bat. You got to build it. Heck no. And it takes time. <laughs> and that's, that's where I think people are so afraid to jump into their own business. It is, because it is you know, fearful. It's, it's they're, scary. They're scared. Of course, it's, you're, you're leaving a, a steady paycheck to hopefully this thing will work for me. You, right. You know, that's, that's a very big decision. And very few people are courageous enough to make it. I kind of got thrown into it. That's why I did it. It was like, yeah, I got, you know, I'll take a look. I was doing interview after interview. Oh, you're overqualified. You want too much money. I was getting nothing yeah. until, until this landed in my, in my face. And I was okay. like, okay, okay, let's go. Okay. But I would have never thought, probably would have never thought about starting my own business. If yeah. I kept that job, I'd probably still be there today. Right. And if you called me or anybody else called me and said, Hey, got this business, you know, we're thinking about maybe you want to join. I would never walk away from, you know, a well into six figure paycheck to a maybe something. You know right. what I mean? Right. Right. Because my mentality was different back then. Exactly. So it goes back to our, you know, it goes back to our mindset. But what exactly. would you say, Diane, is what is one thing that that you can start with? that is small, but something that you can work towards right now? Like if you have no money and of course it's stretched, what do you recommend that someone does that they can do right away? What is one thing? I, I think the first thing is to put a budget together. Okay. You've got to know where your money's going on a monthly basis and you got to account for every single penny because yep. there's things in there that you don't need to spend money on exactly. and we're doing it. Exactly. So if we, if you really, on a, you know, if you get paid weekly, you do a weekly budget and then at the end of the month, add it all up, kind of see where your money's going. And then really look, cause there's a lot of recurring charges on credit cards for different types of services and stuff that you probably don't even realize that that's happening right now. So you got to kind of really look at your money and where it's going on a monthly basis. Okay, so it's, and, and here's the thing, you know, I used to think the word budget was a bad word. Everybody does. Okay, but it Nobody really isn't. Nobody wants a budget. No, but the thing is, you're directing where your money is going. You're seeing where exactly. the money is going. You're creating, like I have an Excel spreadsheet for my business <laughs> and personal. Sure. And I, I have the income and I have the expenses. I have my projected, my forecast that I created for my business. Like, okay, this is what my projected income. This is my, you know, proposals. This is what, so I've intentionally created this information. So when yeah. I did, when I was starting to track my money, I saw that the number one area that we were spending our money on was food. Mm -hmm. Going out to eat all the time, right? No, just buying food because I was cooking and I was okay. wasting. Okay. 
So we didn't go out like a lot, maybe once a week. So we were not, we're never, we've never been extravagant spenders with going out, vacations, none of that was never happening. Okay. Okay. But it's amazing when I was seeing how much money I was spending a week. Just groceries. Just groceries. Yeah. So I was intentionally watching where my money was going in the food department. Mm-hmm. You know, like like now I start shopping at Aldi's versus it's amazing what I didn't I didn't know that Aldi's I'm still I don't know I'm on the fence with Aldi's I don't love it right now yeah it's kinda, yeah eh. um it's oh, I, I love Aldi's I haven't loved it yet I don't like the whole system that they have with the carriages where you put a dot a, a oh. <laughs> you gotta put a diamond or a quarter or something to get a carriage and then you know right. you gotta bag your own st- well with the bags that's a whole nother discussion um I'm not feeling the experience with Aldi's but. Uh, you can spend, you can save some money there, but there isn't a big selection, so I'm not I'm not loving it right now. But you know where you can also things. try try price right as well. Yeah, there's no price right in the in the middle. No, we don't have price right. You Where's the price, price right? right? You're in Hampton. There's, yeah, it's actually right down the street from my house. My father lives there. Okay, so it's price not, right. Not even a quarter of a mile. <laughs> oh, okay. But they they have a big selection of meats. It's not there's not an actual meat department like Stop and Shop and those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But big selection of meats. They're very, very cheap. Okay. Um, everything else you could imagine is there. Okay. So yeah, yeah budget wise, you can you can get a good steak, and pay you know a third of the cost. Okay. That you're okay. going to pay at Stop and Shop. Okay. All yeah. right. That's good. So creating a budget. So being intentional where your money is going. Oh, you know, knowing your numbers, knowing. You know, and I, and I do, important. and I do this in my business coaching. That's one of the things that I do is you got to know your numbers. Absolutely. In your business. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's like, you know, it's like, okay, you get in a car and you have to go on vacation somewhere and you don't know where you're going and you just say, okay, I'm just going to drive and I'll see where it goes. No, you need what? A plan. You need, yeah. You need your GPS. To you need your you GPS. There. More people spend more time on planning their vacations than, than their money. That's exactly right. Very it is true. so true. I mean, they'll go spend seven, ten dollars a day on a sandwich, Starbucks coffee, and then they say they have no money. Right. And they're not willing to to sit down and learn from somebody things that can help them. They think, you know, there's there's people out there that want to learn and don't know that we as financial people exist or where to go to find them. And those people are the ones that we need to talk to, but we, you know, we can't find them if they can't find us kind of thing. Then you got people that are know-it-alls, right? And they did the right thing and everything I did was right. You can't teach me a thing. And, you know, it's like, you sit with me for 30 minutes. If you can honestly say you didn't learn a thing from me, nothing was helpful, I'll pay you whatever your hourly rate is. I'll give you that money. That's how confident I am that people, everybody will benefit from what I have to say. Okay. Okay. Somebody will learn something. Wow. Everybody. Yes. So now, Deborah, you're in the fi- financial advisor. What are some common things that you find with people? Um, hold on. Let me, I don't know what's going on. I can hear you, but I want to see you. So oh. let me go back to Zoom. But in the meantime, the common things that I have found with people, oh, there you go with people is that um, people are finding it hard to save any kind of money at all. You know, people are not, a lot of people are just scraping by, you know, basically they don't have, uh, you know, a pot to, you know what, in. Yeah. So for them thinking savings is a luxury for them, you know, unless they're doing it automatically, and that's the way to go. Most people do that. Absolutely. If yeah. they're doing it, they're not going to, they, 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 they don't have the wherewithal to just take it and put it after no. they, they don't have the discretionary income to, uh, to, you know, take it and just go physically save you're, or do If it's not coming right. out automatically, it's not coming out at all. It's, you're exactly right. Because, and that's just as simple as it is. If you have money in your pocket, you will spend it. Exactly. But if you've got something coming out automatically right out of your check from the go and you're not even used to seeing it, you're not missing it. 
and that's, here, that's, why, that's why you got to set something up that's automatic. But it takes discipline as well. And, oh, absolutely. Um, but here's it the thing, takes, Deborah. It takes effort. It takes effort. But here's the thing, Deborah. When people say they don't have money, you know, they're scraping by. But if you looked at where they're spending their money, I am sure that there's a five dollars. Absolutely. Or one dollar. When right. I sign people up, I have to do a fact finder. Right. And okay. so you can't just go on what they say, but that's the excuse. You have oh, to course. probe more and ask questions. I have to walk with a little booklet. It's called a fact finder to ask them certain questions because you end up finding the money for them. Exactly. exactly. But I'm just exactly. telling you the, um, the overall excuse from most people right. is that they don't have any. Times are really, really hard. You yeah. know, that is, but that's all it is, is an excuse. Two and three jobs, yeah. you know? It really isn't that easy, you know, in back in the 80s and 90s, I could quit a job, quit a job tomorrow and I would have another job Monday. Friday, yeah. I would Absolutely. be out and I can get another job. It's not like that anymore. No, no, no that's, that's for sure. That is for sure. But um, I, I think, I mean, the key with all of this is really being intentional with your money tracking yes. it, where's your money going? And so you have a visual and you're able to make better decisions. Getting, getting the education and budget is key. Yeah. Total, yeah. Total yeah. Key. yeah. The education is huge that, you know, the people, the young kids today don't get any education. No. Okay. At all. No. And they're, and they're buried in student loan debt. So they're like, they're kind of behind the eight ball right out of the gate. I know they get, this, they get this nice fancy degree and what do they do? They're working at Starbucks as a barista. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm sure they, their parents didn't give them a hundred thousand dollars for that. Right. I know. I know. And, and the kids too. And they say this generation is lazy. I don't believe that. I believe there's no jobs out there for them, for these people that they're graduating and there's nothing out there for them. Yeah. Okay. To even be able to pay the student loans back. Well, yeah, so they they're not even making earn. the income. They're not even earning the salary. Exactly right. They can't afford to pay the student loans back. No. So they're not spoiled and they're not lazy. They need to have the right opportunity to <laughs> put in front of them. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any questions, Janet? Any questions? No, I was just going to comment about, um, I don't know if it was Diane or, yeah, when, when you were forced forced into it. And, you know, sometimes we are forced into things like uh, my income got cut, cut in half oh, um, before, before, well, because my husband um, lost his job. Right. And before that, we would always say, you know, oh, we're going to get caught up. We're going to do this. But it's when hard. it happens to you and then you're forced into it, we now are tracking and have said budget. And they, like Dave Ramsey says, even if you're on that tight of a budget and you may only have a ten dollar um, fund budget, you do need to, you know, ha throw that in there because sure. if it's so, if things are so tight and so tough, you don't even schedule like, oh, a five dollar, let's go have an ice cream. That cycle of, you know, you you're gonna drive yourself crazy, and and you spiral downward, and then you end yes. up like like doing something really stupid. So if you allow yourself and budget for it. You know, even a tight budget should have that. But we did look, we did go down that wants and needs list. And once you do that mm -hmm. and you, you know, you kind of settle in, I mean, it's really not, it's not that bad. Right. No, we you're we right. were forced, forced into it. And now that we're in it, it's like, you know, when we get an extra 20 or something, it's, you know, we're, we're excited. That's a great <laughs> thing. We're excited. <laughs> no. You know, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that so true? It's yeah. like everything, you know, here's the thing, every day being grateful for the little things that you have. So you're right, Janet, even at $20. And even $20, but, and also we've learned to just trust and go with the flow. And, you know, we're like, we have like 450 that we're going to put aside for the mortgage. And then my husband needed gas. And he said, well, don't take away from the mortgage. So I just kind of trusted, that, you know, gas money would be there. And today he sold a he sold an end table, thirty bucks, and now we got gas money too. So. Nice. <laughs> it you will know, come when you need it. 
Money will Money come. Will always trust. come. You, you have Money to trust there. and believe, and you'll be taken care of. But it's true. Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. And how it, creative it was, can you be? See, like he sold an end table. He was creative. Right. And if you, you know, if you show God or the world or universe, whatever you want to call it, that you're going to work and you're going to keep, you know, take care of your money, then, you know, it'll come back to you too. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Well. Exactly. You're exactly, exactly right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. Um, I can't think of anything else, but this was good information. I liked, I liked you sharing the tips, Diane. Yes. Um, yes. I yeah. Have. I mean, you know, if, if you guys have any questions you think of it after the fact, just post them here. I can certainly yeah. answer them. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to go down a rabbit hole, but I just kind of, my, my education is now so yeah. vast that I just yeah. want to share with everybody, you know? So yeah. it's, it's just, you know, if I can help or if you know people that need help, I mean, yeah. obviously Deborah, you're doing the same thing I am. So that's not somebody that somebody you're going to send to me, but you know, as long as these people are getting helped and we as women, right kind of stick together and have yes. each other's backs for support. Absolutely. That's I like what this is about. That's yeah. really what this is about. I don't I don't I'm not worried about me winning. I want us all to win. Right. Sure. I, that's that's truly what I want. I want everybody to be successful. Yeah. Because when one wins, we all win. That's sure. exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Put another yeah. notch. And yeah. I like your tip number three. I didn't, I've never heard that one. Make decisions closer to your goals. Yeah, I hadn't had I've yeah. never heard it put that way. I know. Yeah. 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 And it's, and yeah. it's really, it's really important. It's like your decisions you're making, are they reaching your goals? Are you getting closer right. to your goals? Right. And, and, and if you get really focused with it, right. Every time you go to spend money, is this going to help my budget or is this right. going to hurt my budget? Do right. I really need this or do I just want right. it? Right. Ask and, yourself and, those questions. You'll see yourself walking out of places yeah. without right. this stuff. You right. Will. Cause if, if, if that's not your fun budget money, then that's it. Find something else. So you can do that. You're focused. I can tell just by what you're saying that yeah. you guys are doing it the right way. There's so many people out there that more broke anyway, so who cares? And right. they'll take and the I plastic have. out again and again and again. And it's like, I know. It. No, I mean, years ago I got into, you know, a lot of credit card debt and it was, you know, it was really hard to get out of it. And got rid of the credit cards. I only have a debit card. I have one small credit card. And, you know, my dad used to always say, if you don't have the money, you just don't buy it. You don't why, need do you, it. why do you exactly need to right. buy it if you don't have the money? And don't charge it because you still got to pay it. So true. That's right. That's so true. Basic yep. principles. So basic, true. basic, basic. And to this day, my dad, he's 85 years old and he's the one that's got the money he has credit yes. cards, but he pays them when he uses them yes. at the end of the month. He doesn't have all this debt that people have because a lot of times people want, like I look at my neighborhood, these, there's these kids that are, they just turned 16 and they got these big, nice, beautiful new cars. Brand new cars. Yep. That's ridiculous. So the parents are already teaching the kids the right. bad, bad habits, bad habits. Yeah. 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 Then, yeah that's bad. They're not that's teaching them to, to I mean, I've been taught to, you got to work for your money. I mean, okay, money has been a struggle over the years. You know, your mindset, okay, shift your mindset to think, okay, the money's going to come. I know it's going right. to come trusting, trusting, believing, like you said, Janet. Yeah, um, trust the process. Yeah, you got to trust the process. But are you abusing your money or are you respecting your money? Well, you, right. you have to trust the process. And along with that means work in the process. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. yeah working the process. So, right. uh, very important. So Diane, how can we get a hold of you? If you, uh, we want to, you want to put in the chat, oh, yeah, email, sure. website, any... I can do that as soon as I figure out how to put comments in. Oh, in the chat <laughs> on the bottom there, you'll see a That's, chat. Mine is actually on the top. Oh, okay. Let me see where I'm at here. Um, yeah, How do you two know each other, Tina and Diane? Networking. Yeah. Online. It started with online through a group. It did. And then we met in person. We're both the members of the Hamden Chamber. Okay. And it's good stuff. Hey, Tina's it a is. sweetheart. She's she's a hard worker. We were she just is. talking she's before we started, <laughs> like how quickly. I'm so impressed with Tina. 
she, she went literally from like when her and I first met, uh -huh. she was, she was just getting started. She was like, okay, let's talk about ideas. How do I do this? What should we do with this? What can I do right. to help you? You know, all that kind of stuff. And she just went out of the gate in like a hundred miles an hour and she hasn't <laughs> slowed down yet. So I don't plan on awesome. it. I don't plan on it. Like, like people, you know, I was listening to some people talking on Facebook live and they all said, Oh, you know, summer is over and back, back on track. And I'm saying, I never got off track this whole summer. I don't know what people are talking about. I was like, seriously, I didn't have a summer. Okay? That's right. But because that was my own, focused. right. But that was my own, you know, um, decision. But, You're an inspiration to us, Tina. <laughs> well, thank you, Janet. Thank you. I, you know, I was telling, I, I was telling Diane. Do you want me to put it in? Yeah, because so for some reason I can't get to the okay. What's okay? Here. So what is it? Let me uh, tell me what it is. So you can do. Uh, my phone number is two zero three. Okay. Six one nine. Six one nine. Two five three eight. Okay. Okay. My and my email is d munson. Two seven four, okay, at yahoo.com. Excuse me. Are you in Tina's group? Yes, she is. Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. I've I've had a rough couple of months. I just lost my mom last week, so. Oh, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, we've been we've been. Well, I haven't really been around well, at all for the last couple well, of months. It's, it's, it's really it's really it's hard. hard. Yeah, she suddenly it, 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 lost yeah, it was her. very quick. It was it's very very quick problem. and. So pancreatic yeah. cancer 63 oh. days from the diagnosis till she oh. passed no so that's really hard i mean my mom was i'm sorry me. about that my oh, that's okay. you. i appreciate okay. that very much what were you yeah, saying, i'm struggling Janet? a little bit still but you know there's it's gonna happen and i know it's never gonna be perfect right. but it'll get better each day yeah but yeah I, when you said you know are you in the, you're in the group like yeah exactly because i haven't well yeah no i i hadn't you know i hadn't but no it, it's really hard when you lose them that you know that abruptly my mom was 98 and still it's god bless it's tough. yeah and it still broke your heart wow yeah yeah my mom was only 77 she was young no 98. never sick never yeah. sick a day in her life it was incredible wow. it and does. just it's, like that nothing like losing your mom i don't care what age no, it's true. You're right. You know, it's funny because my mom has Alzheimer's and she's oh. alive. And so um, for me, she's already passed away. Yeah. Yes. When they're, when they're that far into it. That she has to be, that has she to doesn't be recognize. Hard. Yeah. She doesn't recognize me at all. Oh, that wow. has to be hard. That's heartbreaking. And yeah. my mother and I always were not close. We were not close. My mother and I were never close. And we always butt heads. If she said one thing, I said the opposite. <laughs> and that's just the way it was. And it's funny how now I'm the one that's taking care of her more. And it just seems like we're closer. Okay. But she doesn't know who I am. And I'm just <laughs> and I'm just like looking at her like I'm just watching that's her like, crazy. you don't you don't really know who no, I am, Mom. That's like, not funny. But now she likes you. No. <laughs> That's so awesome. funny, Tina. You're getting along because you don't know each other. I know. Like, Every, everything happens for a reason, <laughs> Tina. You were meant to take care of her. I think reason. I think so, and I'm very grateful yeah. for that. Well, and you know what? I have to say, if I wasn't working in my business yeah. mm -hmm. and I was at my job, I wouldn't have been able to leave right. exactly and be there. So I find this it it was it's the right time. There's going to sure. be a blessing in this. Yeah, yes. there will be a blessing in this, and um, yeah. Yeah. so yeah, so it's so I aging parents is a bad yeah. thing it's, when you're in the middle of it. It's tough. Really yeah, is, really is. So my um, my dad has onset of dementia right now, so his is getting worse and worse as we go. Now with my mom passed, and that crushed him. Yeah. So exactly. I have a feeling this is you know go. It's going to go a lot quicker yeah. than we originally anticipated, and um, yeah, it's hard. It's really yeah. hard. So yeah. for him, just to watch him, it breaks my heart. It right. is. Yeah. Exactly. It's tough. It's tough. So, um, all right. So we're coming up to almost eight o'clock. Um, so Diane, this has been great. I mean, I hope, like I said, connect with her. You're both in my group, Diane, all of you are in my group. So engage with each other questions. Yeah, for um, sure.
hopefully this was helpful, ladies. I hope this was uh, good for everybody. And like I said, if you have any other questions, feel free. Reach yeah, out. reach out to Diane. Um, next week, we're going to have a woman. Her name is Sarah Gretzinger. Um, she's a trip. She is the owner of a group called Savvy Networker. And she's all about networking, connecting. Nice. And, and she's going to talk about, so I'm even curious what she's going to talk about. She called it <laughs> mo monetized chaos. So it's going to be about motivation. Oh, I'm gonna <laughs> sounds like my kind of person. <laughs> and I said, wow, this is going to be interesting. Whatever she's going to talk about. So I trust the process and trust her. I'm going to be rich. <laughs> I mean, like monetized go. chaos. Okay. This is good. So, um, so tune in next oh. Thursday and, okay. and then I'll share more oh. next week. What October is going to be. Awesome. About. Thank you very much guys. All right. Have a great okay. night. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Bye.